JD here again. Welcome to my channel. This is the last step in this whole thing. And the last thing to do is actually to get that roller table uh, back in place. So I think this is what I'm looking to do. I've got an inverto uh, staking set here so I can set this up nicely. And when you're doing this, you have to make sure you're picking the right stake. So the stake I'm picking for, for this activity has got enough um, uh, it's got enough uh, it's got basically the groove here is for the impulse jewel to go down but what I want to do is take this sorry about hitting the camera there but I want to take this balance off and as you saw I tested it in a, I tested it in both directions and it's perfect so there's no problem there at all um, I do want to put a little bit of pressure on the balance when I'm unscrewing it so I just let my uh, tweezers lean on it for a second and as I take the screw out of the balance get that out of the way completely out of the way I can pull my uh, this out here because I was using that to uh, shim it up just a bit shim shiminy shim shiminy shim shim shiri so now I can take this up like this and get that out of the way and there's the balance and I want to be able to put the roller table back on the balance so the tricky part here is to there we go I want to put this put this roller table onto a stake and make sure that it's uh, sitting there nicely and there's no issue on the stake like that as they punch the roller table back in so let me look at Steak. I think this is the one I used from before. I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, this is the one. So the steak is absolutely perfect. And I'll put that back in there. And I actually didn't need the groove for the roller table for that steak. I do need it for the other one though. So as I punch it back on. So what I do is, then is and very carefully move that out of the way so I want to put that the balance on here um, again uh, I just want to make sure I get the right stakes here because I used two before I had one for the bottom and one for the top and maybe this was the top one I had because I wanted to have enough room on the roller table to punch that straight down and this looks like a lot, it's a lot bigger. So let me go get the right stakes here. All right, I've decided to flip the stake for a stump because this is way too loose. And I think I might be able to use that to drive the roller table down. So I'm going to use a stump instead. And the stump, I think, goes one over from where the stake was. Stake and stump. There was a restaurant in Fredericton, New Brunswick called the Steak and Stein. When I was an old army guy, we used to go there on Friday nights. And I'm telling you, if the band didn't show up, the fights would start. And we didn't get involved in the fights. Thank God we were a bit too smart for that. But we thought it was all really interesting. <laughs> so so there's the um, that stump, stake stump thing happening there. And I think this one... I'm not sure if this is the right one, but it can be a little smaller. It still looks a bit too big. And this one looks way too big. So I want it to be as tight as possible, but without interfering with the roller jewel. So let me uh, get my flashlight out and have a look and see if I can find another. All right, I found the right one. So this is the right one right here. It's pretty small. The hole is pretty small, and you want the surface to be covering the uh, the complete. Uh, you want it to be covering all of the the uh, roller table, so you don't want trouble trouble with the roller table trouble in China. So I want to put this on the stump. I've already got that. Um, I already got this set up nicely. I'm going to use two hands to place this down so I can get absolute control. There we go. And you can see how that's down nicely. Now the question is, the question is, 
which side of this does the roller table go on because I don't want to put it on the wrong side and I remember the if I look at the red marks on this thing uh, there's a red mark on this side and that's where the the actual uh, the collet goes right for the uh, hairspring so if the collet's on this side the impulse jewel is on this side so it's facing away from me right now and I'll just rotate that after I get it down again and it's facing away from me so if I rotate it like this it's going to be facing towards me yeah again my only fear of this whole job was if there's just too much shellac on the other side is it going to interfere with this going down what I could do is what I might do is file that a bit so I know it's out of the way because I don't want to put this in place and all of a sudden it's interfering with the table going down because that would be trays upsetting so what I can do is file this just a bit so I'm going to grab the roller table um, in a pin vise and I just want access to the end there so I can file that the top of it just to remove some shellac so I should be able to just place this in the pin vise without a problem which I'm kind of doing right now Yeah, the pin vise is just putting enough pressure on this roller table to allow me to very carefully file the edge of that shellac. So I got it like this right now. I just don't want to have to re-shellac it. So there it is there. So right where the shellac is close to the hole, I'm not sure if that'll interfere with the uh, with the watch at all. So I'm just going to re I'm going to file out a bit. So I have potentially the world's largest box of files. So these are all, these are needle files here, like that, and these are flat files with uh, pointy edges, so I might not use that because that's just too aggressive. Um, I've got a bunch of very small combination of needle files and flat files here. Um, i got some pretty aggressive files here. For, I probably wouldn't use those for watch work, but I got a whole slew of these files here, which are all tapered. Some of them are flat and rounded. Um, I could possibly use one of those. Um, I got some burnishing uh, files here for burnishing, making holes bigger. Um, I've got some flat files here. I'm sure how well organized all this stuff, but it's pretty good. And I've got a whole crap load of flat files here. And then I've got more rounded files here and if you just don't have enough files I've got a bunch of a uh, burnishers these are burnishing files again so for working so I think I have enough files to find the right file to file that stuff with all right now I'm going to start filing this thing and I probably shouldn't show the whole filing but I just want to get make sure that the shellac is not too close to the hole so what I'm going to do is just move this back a bit and then use the uh, pin vise as a guide for filing. How do you like them apples? Yeah, because a lot of this shellac is not even in play here. So. so if I just start removing a bit of it here. It's actually working quite well. And just keep removing it. Not sure if I can show you my filing technique, but so what I'm doing here is I'm holding this in the pin vise and then I'm just putting this file on the edge 
like that and then just moving it back and forth and I know it's got enough grippies and stuff to remove some of that shellac like that's actually down to nothing so I'm just going to take some Rodico now and just dab the Rodico here just to get rid of any filings and this jewel should be fine like that so yeah there's no problem there yeah and what I did when I was actually putting this jewel in place is I pushed it I pushed the jewel up a bit through the shellac so it got it, it adhered to the jewel the shellac adhered to the jewel then I pushed it down through the hole again so I'd make sure that that was in really good so that's good there I'm just going to dump that get rid of my pin vise and let's get that thing on all right so the jewel is facing me I'd like that to be at 90 degrees would be perfect right it'll play games with you as you put it on but you want this to be around 90 degrees to the uh, to the arm of the balance so kind of like that there it's probably about as close to 90 as I'm gonna get just like that there and then I believe that the um, this was the right steak for that so steak I think I'm having fish for dinner tonight so I'm gonna put that straight down like that so that's on there like that and then I should be able to tap that down let me get my tap the down device all right so let's just tap that into place And I'm watching it as I tap it down. There, that's in place. It doesn't take much pressure on your hammer to tap something down because something that's maybe one pound per square foot of tapping, when you go like into a space this big, it's probably a thousand pounds per square foot. So, so that's now in place, as you can see. And I want to get this in place. What I want to do now is I've got to turn this around and I've got to uh, now put the uh, put the hairspring on. So I can reuse the same the same uh, jobby doohickey that I use for tapping because I know on the end it fits perfectly. So what I do is I these are reverso uh, stakes, staking sets. A really nice staking set. I've had it for, I've had it for years. So years, Jerry. Somebody online thinks my name is actually Jerry, which I think is hilarious. So, so I think if this, uh, let me think now. Now this is for the other side, so this won't work for. Uh, will that work for pushing that on? Yeah, it will actually. It will. So as long as it's lined up like that. And I think I can just turn this like this and then tighten that. So now I know that's all aligned. Aligned. It's aligned. And I want the jewel facing me. I want the jewel side facing me because I've got a big opening there for the jewel on my side, as you can see. So I want that facing me. So I want to lower that nice and carefully so I know that fits because that's the same the same device I used to tap it down with. I'm holding everything super loosely. There we go. So now it's sitting down nicely. It's got the little crack in the uh, in the, um, the stake and then and then that crack in the stake lets the jewel sit down and then I just have to take the hairspring now and grab the hairspring and not screw this up. I need to take the hairspring, and I know that balance runs freely with this installed, so I want to take the hairspring and I want to line that up with with the actual um, red mark on the uh, on this side here, right? So I want to line it up with the red mark. So I'm going to 
have to turn this around so it faces me so I can align it properly like that and grab that hairspring nice and carefully uh, you know what uh, let me see I want to turn that hairspring around I don't want it like facing this way I want it facing the other way I'm just picking it up on my mat and then turning it around so it's I'm looking where that red mark is relatively speaking So when I place the hairspring down now, I can rotate the uh, that, my friends, is absolutely perfect. So that's actually lined up really well. And now I can probably use just one of these stakes to push this down. I'd like it to be well seated, so... Yeah, that's nice right there. The stake's probably too big. But... There we go. That's in there now. Let me just tap the top of the... Uh, of this could actually use that to lift it up so that's that's in place now all I need to do is put the balance cock put this back on and then see if it runs and if it runs and it stops upside down um, I'm not sure what next what to do next I could make sure there's no overcoil on it so there's no issue there but but the balance is in nicely and there should be no issue there at all so it's just a uh, It's what you call the next horror step, eh? So there's the jewel. So let me just show you what all this stuff looks like. All right, there it is. There's the balance. Like that. And there's the impulse. There's the impulse jewel. Nice and straight upside up. Straight up and down. No problem. Um, and level. And there's no issue and no chips. And there's the balance. Uh, the hairspring on top. And it's relatively i'd say relatively aligned with that red mark see that red mark that's a good alignment there i think so there shouldn't be any problem and there's a little bit of an overcoil there but let's just get this balance back in place and see what happens all right what you're looking at now is the base of my stereo microscope i move my camera around to to be able to show this um, yeah, I got various techniques of putting balances back on, but this one here seems to work okay. I just have to, I'm looking at this under the stereo microscope, and I'm looking at where the stud is on the watch. And if I move the, the regulator arm all the way over, like that, right, then I can, then I can basically put the balance in place and then heave the, uh, the balance spring over the uh, over the two uh, regulator arms, right? So, but the thing is, I got to put this down. Um, I'm always concerned about breaking the pivot, right? This is my biggest concern when I do watch work, is that the pivot will be damaged somehow. So, so I'm eyeballing kind of where that uh, where the hairspring, where everything kind of sets up perfectly, and just kind of eyeball it and then lower it down like that. And then I take my screwdriver, I use a very small screwdriver, I've got two of them out here, but I use a very, the smallest one to push the, uh, the stud down. And I can see right away where, that, where, the, uh, where the hairspring is riding with the, uh, the two jewels, or the two arms that basically set the timing, right? So... So if I do that and then push this down, push that into position like that, and then I go over on the other side like this. I'm sorry, you really can't see this close up. I, I made the mistake of not buying the micros a stereo microscope with a camera on the top. It would have been so good. So maybe in the future I'll pick one up. But for now, I got what I got, right? So. 
I just want to take that hairspring and kind of feed it into the mouth of the, uh, the two regulator arms there. And there, they're in there now. And now I can take this screwdriver from the bottom, I'll tighten that up. And very carefully, of course. And I always drag the screwdriver low, so if something were to slip, it's not going to interfere with the hairspring. You want to make sure that your hairspring is pristine. And when I'm turning screws and stuff, I typically push it downward away from the hairspring. Because if something slips, it slips away from the hairspring. So I picked that one up. I'm not sure how I picked that one up, but years ago I started doing that. So, so that's the story. I'm sticking with it. So I think I got the screw in pretty good right there. I don't think it needs to be tightened anymore. Um, I don't want to break the screw, first of all. And we just give one more try turn on it and see if it's good. Yeah, it's pushing against the stud, so... So I think that's good right there. So now I'll pull this up and install it on the watch and see what happens. All right, now I'm going to install this on the, uh, the watch here and see if I have success or not. So let me just grab this like that. And I'm going to turn this around very carefully, like so. And I'm going to grab this. And as you recall, I had no problem before. So I got to make sure that the mouth of the, the mouth of the pallet fork is going to accept the jewel the way it is. So what I'm going to do is move that over to the other side. Like that. Um, I'm not sure, do I have power on that or not? I can't remember if I've got power on that. I don't think I do, actually. So I'm going to put this in. I'm going to be brave and put this in like this. Usually you put it in with a bit of power on it and then you turn it around and it finds home and starts ticking. That's the good situation. So I'll put it in like this for now. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a wind here because I think I took the power off it before to take everything out. Oot! So I'm just going to wind this up a bit. Yeah, there is no power on it. I don't need to completely power it up here, I don't think. I'm not sure what I've done here, but... I don't really know if that's in place or not. Oh, I know what's wrong. This regulator arm is way out of whack. There we go. That was way over in the wrong side. So I got some ticking going on here. Again, um, I got to test this thing upside down. So the first thing I'm going to do here is put the shim back in because I know it it likes the shim. Shim shiminy, shim shiminy, shim shim shiri. Well, the good news here is that it's ticking. So that means the impulse jewel is working. It's incorrectly. It's in its spot. So now I just want to lift this up a bit, put that shim in. that and then I can screw this down and if this doesn't work upside down I'm going to commit suicide I'm <laughs> just telling you okay it's a lot of work as you can see I know that the gentleman who's uh, who I'm repairing the watch for told me I could give up and give him back the watch but 
I'm just way too stubborn for that. So, sorry, sir. I have to continue until I feel comfortable that the thing is repaired. Even though it's 100 years old. There, it's nice and tight, still ticking. Make sure this is tight. Checking it sideways. Now, I'm going to pray right around now. I see if it, because if it doesn't work upside down. And it's ticking upside down, but it's still slowing down. It's still it's ticking, which is good. But it's ticking a little too slow. So now, and I know it's not the jewel. Now the question is, somebody said, is it the overcoil on the hairspring? And I don't think it is. Let me see here. So it's been rejeweled and everything. Um, let me see, what would this be? Again, it could be the dart. The dart on the uh, on the pallet fork. But that impulse jewel is working really nicely, which I'm very happy with. So that's an excellent thing. So, so that's a plus. If that counts for anything. And let me see if that how it does tick upside down, which is nice. It ticks sideways, and he said he wanted at least to make sure it worked while it was sitting in a stand. <laughs> I'm a bit more anal than that. I know that the thing spun like crazy when I had it upside down. There was no issue there at all. So the question is, what's touching? That's the question. And if it's the overcoil that's touching, is that... Is it causing a big issue here, or what? I'm looking at the overcoil, like it is ticking. It's definitely ticking, which is nice. The impulse jewel is nicely set in there. I just can't see whether it's there's an issue with that overcoil. I'll have to hold it up in front of my face. So it's running now, though, which is nice, right? So that's a positive. Um, let me get this thing ticking faster. There we go. It just needs to work itself in again. I need to put some more power on the spring. Get this thing going. Uh, see, that's ticking really nicely like this, right? So if there's a problem with the overcoil, uh, maybe it is. I'm not sure. Do I lower the stud slightly or what? If I do that, does that problem go away? That's the question. So if I just lower the stud just a bit, upside down now that's running a lot better still slowing down a bit though so could it be the dart I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to end the video now. I think I did a good job on the uh, replacing this. The Impulse Duel, I got it all reassembled as you saw. Again, it still slows down when it's uh, in the opposite direction, but it didn't have that problem when I put the whole thing in without everything else in there. So it may be the interface between the, uh, the, the dart on the... Uh, 
the roller table and the dart maybe on the uh, balance cock because somebody said it might be that dart and, which would piss me off if that dart is a problem. Yeah, I can see the dart and it doesn't seem like there's an issue with that dart, but it's pretty high, so. If that dart is touching the uh, roller table when it sits down a bit, then it's bending the dart back a bit might solve the whole problem. Don't know. So just bend that dart back a bit and it might solve the whole problem. So we'll leave that for later. I'm getting pretty tired. It's five o'clock. I tried once again today and um, put another couple hours in it and it's uh, running really well like this. I wish the face was the other side. <laughs> like I said, it runs, but I got to fix this problem. But I'm pretty happy about the uh, work I did on the impulse jewel. So that's it. I'm JD. Thanks for watching my channel. I'll put this one up so you can watch me struggle again. So the last, last thing to do, last possible thing would be the dart because the roller, the impulse duel is now in good position straight up and down and you can see it's working really well with this watch. Um, and I didn't check the amplitude on it yet, but I'm sure it's pretty good. But anyway, thanks for watching my video and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>